What is up everybody? Welcome to today's video where I'll be talking about how to run a faster 5k. Yeah, let's go! Oh yes, good day my friends and a very warm welcome to you. My name is Donato and welcome to my channel. And for those of you who are new here, a very warm welcome. If you haven't seen any of this series, I would highly recommend to click on the link up there, the prelude about this particular series and give you a bit of a background of where I've come from in terms of setting and so on. So it puts a bit of a, a base in terms of the information I'm about to uh, be giving you about how to run a faster 5K. And if you are also new here, I'd really appreciate your support and click in the link just down here and to subscribe and maybe help get me my next pizza. Yes. And for those of you who are regular here or new, it would be fantastic if you could also maybe even buy me a coffee. Yes, I've got a link down in the uh, link below where you can help support this channel and buy me a coffee. I know if you are regular viewers, you see me drinking tea, but I haven't seen a website where it's in terms of buying a tea. So this site is called Coffee. When you see the link, it'll all be explained, yeah? Okay, thank you. So yes, running a faster 5K, or more particularly, maybe some of you have come here to run a sub 20 5K, but I'll be talking in general in terms of how to get faster and covering five main areas, that's right, five areas that will hopefully help you guys and what has helped me in terms of running a faster 5K. And it'll be the areas including training, so number one will be training, two, diet, number three, injury risk reduction, number four, a race day strategy, and number five, I'll be going through a summary of some of the key points of that. So without further ado, let's get straight into the first one. Yes, number one in terms of the training. Now, I've put a link down in the comments here in terms of a getting started, a couch to 5K um, run, because for some people, you may want to get started in the 5K and want to go from couch to 5K, but in terms of getting quicker, there's a whole platitude of training plans out on the social webs and how we can get faster. But a few key tips in terms of the training that I would give um, is that for a lot of people, especially now with the growth of parkrun, and you can turn up to a parkrun almost anywhere in Britain and it's grown all over the world, and for some people, and, and it's a common mistake that some do, is turning up, up week in, week out, and racing it, and expecting to get faster and faster every week. Now, that may happen if you're getting started and you're new, and it may happen for a period of time, but then you'll plateau, and it's a case of doing some specific training, which is what I'm going to talk about, not in any detail, but just to give you an outline of what to look at and what to work for you. But the two key things, that I would consider is predominantly speed sessions and tempo runs where essentially with those two runs that will help you get quicker but it's to factor it into a particular training plan. So in essence only do one of those maybe once a week but with a lot of the training plans if anything to take away in terms of what we do is to stick with the training plan and the one key thing that I say time and time again is to remain consistent with your training. Whatever the training plan is, however many times you wanna go out running or doing any other form of physical exercise, is to keep it consistent. And I know that we have life, family, and all those types of things to uh, consider, but it's essential that we keep the training consistent and fit it in around our daily lives, jobs, families, and so on and so forth, and what works for you. And what works for me may not work for you. So the times of the days that I go out training, I often prefer to go out first thing in the morning before I go to work. Now I know for some people that may not be practical, but find a time that works for you, that you can commit to and that you can do on a regular basis. And as I mentioned in those training plans, have a look and you know there'll be things in there to check either any tempo runs, speed sessions, and that'll help you get quicker, but not all the sessions are to be that. The number one key session, as with any of these, because 5K requires a lot of aerobic uh, fitness, is the uh, longer runs. Now obviously, and I say it's obviously, you know, training for a 5K is not like training for a marathon. So your long runs aren't gonna be for 
20 miles or for three hours, yeah, it's going to be considerably shorter, but it'll still be longer than, uh, than maybe a half an hour run. So have a look at your plan and work on aerobic type training where the training pace is at an easy pace, yeah, for the longer runs and for a lot of runs, even short runs, you can go at an easy pace and that will be at a pace that is conversational. And if you have some of the gadgets and gears, I would highly recommend um, with the heart rate monitor, if you want to get exact science and what works best is looking at what I call zone two. Because for some people and myself included when I was running, I didn't have one of these and I was just running, running fast I think, or running at a set pace, whatever the pace was. And for a lot of people, if zone two is here in the middle, for some people running an easy pace are running too slow or they're running too fast. Neither of those is helping build the aerobic base. And believe me, for a 5K, whilst it's uh, considerably shorter, to, shorter than a marathon, it's still a long way and we still need an aerobic level of fitness. Maybe not as much for uh, the longer distances, but we still need some in there. So have a look at a plan that's balanced and works for you and that you can commit to. Okay, number two. A lot of people talk about what kind of diet should I have? Do I need to change anything, do anything? I mean, in, in terms of a simple answer for myself, I would say uh, is just have a balanced diet and you know, the vegetables, the greens, all that type of stuff and, and day in day out is, is eat, eat, eat the good stuff. And it, but it's okay to have what some people might term as uh, junk food. And um, so for me, some people say that pizza is fast food and whatever. I mean, I eat a fair bit of pizza. I eat Chinese takeaways, Indian takeaways. It doesn't, uh, doesn't slow me down. Now, I know some people out there may be watching, oh, if you cut this out, cut that out, you'd go quicker. But it's also about having a bit of fun. After all, this is the fast and <laughs> the fast and fun Friday run series, yeah? I know. So. In terms of diet, you don't need to do anything radical, really, unless you are eating a lot of the uh, junk type foods and you might need to change that. But also, in terms of eating regularly, but then that's a whole new debate in terms of what types of food to eat. And drink. But I would say, in terms of getting quicker, it's just eat healthily and eat, eat a balanced diet, yeah? Number three, in terms of one of the key aspects if you are training is to re reduce the risks of uh, getting injuries and uh, having recently come out of a uh, injury for a few months it is important to do some key things to keep us and reducing that risk not we can't really prevent sometimes the injuries we can help reduce the risk of the injuries occurring and there's two main areas in terms of where we can help and that is especially for a 5k uh, uh, runs and the training, especially with speed sessions, is the dynamic warm-up at the beginning before we start the actual speed sessions, tempo runs, and that can form part of a, you can have a 10-15 minute jog, easy run at the start to warm the muscles up, and then do some drills to uh, whether it be leg lifts, jumps, squats, anything to get the dynamic movement of the legs moving and get the legs fully warmed up and ready to go for that training session. And also, before the actual uh, race itself, it's essential to have your muscles fully warmed up and ready to go. The second one is after the run, is doing the uh, static stretches to ensure that we've stretched out the muscles to a good, back to the original length, because obviously if we've been doing some training, is the muscles tend to contract and the stretches at the end of the uh, session is to stretch the muscles back out, ready for the next training session. So those are the two key points in helping in terms of reducing the risk of injuries. There are other things that you can do as well in terms of foam rolling, massaging and so on. If you want to do that, then that's great as well. Yeah, thank you. Number four. Race day strategy, yeah? So we've come to race day, we've done all the training and we're all pumped up and ready to go. Race day strategy. Well, the race day starts when we get up and it's so important to have a, a good night's sleep. Yeah, I think unlike uh, marathons where you really do need some uh, good sleep, you know, like building up to race, 
the night before you may get away with it on a 5k but again essential to get a good night's sleep so you're ready got the energy ready to go for the yeah, 5k race yeah so you get up in the morning and I would highly recommend at least around two hours before the actual race having a light breakfast if the race is in the morning um, or if you're turning up to a, a timed run like a park run at uh, 9 a.m then 7 a.m is a good time to uh, have something to eat but then this is something you can experiment yourself because we're all different so for me around 7 a.m I'll just have a very light breakfast very light breakfast and um, whether it be a couple of slices of toast or a bagel and that would be it and a cup of herbal tea and um, for me I don't take in uh, any caffeine I know some people do and that helps them but again experiment for yourself and see see what works for you so that's the actual meal in terms of race day strategy but when we turn up to the actual race as I mentioned earlier regarding the reducing the risk of injuries is to do your dynamic warm-up before the actual 5k run and it's again really essential to get those muscles warmed up if you want to get faster and get that uh, PB that you want to do so we're here at the race ready to go and like with a lot of park runs there can be a lot of people there and um, I would recommend if you want to go out irrespective of what time you're running at is try and get towards the front yeah and not get boxed in behind people I think the park run that I do is about five six hundred people that's a lot of people so I aim to get towards the front and, uh, and go at the pace I want to go at so for a 5k people tend to split the uh, race and, and the, the pace that you run at into five slices yeah or or it's three miles so they split it into three slices yeah it's about I think it's 3.1 miles is it exactly so uh, three miles so the first mile you're going out at a pace that uh, and the thing with a 5k most of the time there's I've heard people use expressions where their hearts almost coming out of their mouths they're going so fast because this is a fast fast race yeah and you want to go out as fast as you can to run a sub 20 um, minute park run of 5k that's running at four minute kilometers yeah four minute per kilometer for each kilometer so that's a pretty fast clip yeah so it's essential to get up and lock into a good pace so you're going out not too fast yeah not a sprint I see so many people sprinting off at the beginning and after about the first one or two kilometers they're then tailing off but to go at a speed that um, part of the train has helped so you feel you could probably feel uncomfortable but not too uncomfortable yeah because obviously it needs to be controlled and at a fast pace so that's your first mile the second mile you're clocking in that pace and really going for it yeah and then the third mile where you just want to keep following through and if you can pick up the pace towards the end to finish with that wonderful sprint finish which we all want to do yeah and that's in essence in terms of pacing that strategy now I've heard people where they do all different types and it's the same for different races some people go out way too fast at the beginning and then flake off towards the end but again it's it's different for different people some people prefer going even pace so they'll run at an even pace all the way through so all the five kilometers the splits are all at the same times others tend to go off a bit quicker for the first one or two miles and then hold on for the third mile do what works for you and I say for me even splits work for me with a, a little sprint towards the end if my legs can cope for it because often on the day we may not be feeling it so don't worry about it you know if you find that uh, you've done everything you've prepped and you planned and you didn't get that PB you didn't get sub 20 don't worry about it there's always the next next one to do but as mentioned almost at the very beginning where I said racing every weekend try and get faster isn't the best uh, the best of options I would recommend go back to the training and bring in a training plan to help you do that and then come back in six to eight weeks time and then give it another go and see what happens then yeah okay so that's your race day strategy so in summary number five in summary what can I say whether it be the training the diet the reduction of risk of injuries the race day strategies all of them and 
for a lot of things in terms of running it, they're all as important as, as each other. So I tend to look at me running as a whole and complete holistic way. And it's not just about the training, it's not just about the race, it's not just about the food, it's the whole thing and doing these on a consistent and persistent way. And with that, hopefully, you will be successful with your 5K runs and you too will get quicker and one day, if you're not already doing it, go in a sub 20. I'd very much love to hear from you guys in the comments below what, what works for you. As, as I mentioned, sometimes it's different for different people, so we'd like to, this to be interactive and leave some comments below of what works for you. And also, I'd love to hear from you if any of the comments and uh, information I've given here has helped you in some way or you're going to try out. I'd really love to hear from you on that. So, that's it in terms of running a faster 5K. I hope you found it useful. If you have, give it a thumbs up. And I very much look forward to seeing you at the next fast and fun run series. Thank you all so much. And remember, I'll be seeing you 